Greetings, everyone. Today, we will talk about plagiarism, what plagiarism is, and which are the different types of plagiarism. Without further ado, let's start. After working in academia for many years, I can say that, unfortunately, plagiarism is a plague. For this reason, many institutions have decided to adopt different types of software that deter such unethical behavior and encourage academic integrity. However, knowing what plagiarism is represents many times the key to avoiding plagiarism. But what is plagiarism? Many times, people believe that plagiarism refers only to taking information from other resources without giving credit to the source or the author. However, plagiarism is much more than that. This is why in this video, we're going to have a look at different examples, different types of plagiarism, educate ourselves, and avoid it in the future. One type of plagiarism is global plagiarism, or what other people also call as cloning. This consists in copying the entire paper or having someone else write that paper for you. In this example, you can see that the student has chosen to take another paper and just change the name of the previous author with his or her name. As Turnitin shows 98% similarity, which is in fact plagiarism. The second type of plagiarism that we will talk about today is verbatim plagiarism, or what some people also call control C, because the student goes and copy and pastes information from another source onto his or her own paper. Also, instead of citing and giving proper credit to the source, the student does not cite the source and goes to just replace a few words here and there with some synonyms. Still, the software is going to detect this type of plagiarism. In this example, you can see that the student chose to take complete sentences and copy and paste them to own paper. Another example that we provide here shows that the student copied a sentence and replaced a few words with some synonyms. Therefore, this is a clear example of verbatim plagiarism. Another type of plagiarism is when students cite the source. However, the student forgets to enter the quotation marks. As we see in this example, the student slightly makes a reference to the source, but the student does not use quotation marks. Instead, the student takes word for word the information that appears in the original source and pastes it in his or her paper. And that is, again, plagiarism. To avoid plagiarism, the student should have paraphrased, said it in his or her own words, and also cited the source. The third type of plagiarism that we will talk about is called patchwork plagiarism or mosaic. In this type of cases, the person takes fragments from another work or a series of works and pieces them together. Let's look at this example. In this case, we can see that the student has taken information from three different sources and inserted one sentence in between each 
of the sentences taken from other sources to make believe that this paper has been written by the same person. Unfortunately, it was not the case, and Turnitin has been able to detect mosaic plagiarism. Self-plagiarism is another common type of plagiarism. This happens when the students use a previous work written by themselves, yet they submit it for another assignment. Let's say that in the past you have written a paper about the importance of preserving the natural environment. And for another class, you are assigned a similar or sometimes even exactly the same topic. Therefore, you believe that you can use the exact same paper that you have already written and it is perfectly fine just because it was you who has written it. Unfortunately, you are wrong. This type of actions are considered also plagiarism as you are self-plagiarizing. When you are in school, you are expected to practice your writing and your research skills. Therefore, when your professor assigns an assignment, it is because the professor expects you to complete that assignment because you need to practice certain skills. Assuming that just because that paper has been written by you, you could use it for another class, that is wrong. Remember, that is self-plagiarism and we cannot do it. You could make reference to your previous work. However, you have to do it correctly. You cannot use it word for word. You can just cite it or reference it. Paraphrasing plagiarism is yet another type of plagiarism. This happens when the person uses another person's ideas. However, the writer forgets to give credit to the original author. Let's look at this example. In this case, the student has written a text and the student makes reference right here only to one reference. However, when we look at the references list, we realize that there are one, two, three, four, five references and similarity with Turnitin is zero. It means that the writer has used information from all the sources. However, the writer is not citing those sources in the text. And that is another type of plagiarism. What we see in the text must also appear in the endless references. The fact that Turnitin shows 0% similarity does not mean that there is no plagiarism. You have forgotten to correctly cite and reference the sources. The last type of plagiarism that we will be talking today is what we call the 404 error. In this case, the person cites a source. However, that source does not exist. This is why when you click on the link of that supposed source, the results show 404 error. Let's see one example. In this case, the student has cited several sources and we can see that there are also links provided for those sources. Let's go to the first source. This should take us directly to the article cited in this paper. As you see, instead of getting access directly to that source, we got a 404 error which means that specific article does not exist. And that is another case of plagiarism. My friends, that is all for today. Remember, when writing, do the right thing. Cite your sources. If you would like to learn more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for today. See you next time.